So now we're going to spend a few minutes talking about ethers and epoxides, and we'll start with ethers. And we're not going to spend much time here. They're fairly inert. We'll find out they only really do a couple chemical reactions. Uh, and being chemically inert, it often turns out they're really good solvents. And here are a couple common examples here, ether or diethyl ether. Uh, and then tetrahydrofuran here, THF. Uh, we saw these both as solvents in the Grignard reactions, but they're solvents for a wide variety of organic reactions uh, because they can dissolve a, a wide variety of organic compounds. Now, they are polar and aprotic, so they are not capable of hydrogen bonding on their own. Although if you mix them with water or something else capable of hydrogen bonding, they can act as hydrogen bond acceptors. Uh, but that's the deal here. Polar aprotic, make good solvents, fairly chemically inert. Uh, we'll see there's not much they really do. So now we're going to take a look at naming ethers. And it turns out IUPAC accepts both a systematic as well as a common way of naming ethers. And we'll start with the systematics here. And in this case, uh, the ether is not a major functional group. It's not going to be the parent chain. It is simply going to be an alkoxy substituent coming off that parent chain. Uh, so first thing you do is decide what side of the ether is the parent chain. It's usually whichever side has a longer carbon chain or a more complex. Uh, in this case, that's going to be this side. So this is going to be our substituent, the smaller side, and it's attached to a parent chain. It's a four carbon parent chain. It's going to be butane, and we'll number it to give the only substituent we have the lowest possible number. So we want to make sure it's attached to carbon one of the parent chain. Now in this case, and we we'll, won't use alkoxy generically, but in this case, it's typically a methyl with oxygen. So this is a methoxy group. And in this case, it's attached to carbon one. So we'll give that chain locator, name the substituent. So one methoxy, and then your parent chain butane here. So that's the name, one methoxy butane. If we take a look at the common name here again, as well. So here, you're going to name it as an alkyl alkyl ether. It's three words. And essentially, you're just taking the carbon chains that are on either side of the oxygen. Now, it turns out this only works for simple ethers. As long as you have a simple carbon chain on both sides, that's when we'd use this. If you got uh, fairly complex ones, we would never do this. Uh, but in this case, we've got a butyl group on this side. We've got a methyl group on this side, and you're just going to name those in alphabetical order. So here, butyl comes before methyl, and again, not because it's longer, but becomes before, because it comes first in the alphabet. So here, we're going to say butyl, word number one, methyl, word number two, and then simply ether. So that's butyl methyl ether. And again, whether you name it one methoxybutane, the systematic way, or butyl methyl ether, uh, the common name, they're both accepted by AUPAC.